If you have a wave function state which is evolving with respect to time, then the question is, what does the quantum mechanical theory tell us about the time evolution? You see, in quantum mechanics, time is not an observable. That means we do not have an operator corresponding to time in the same way we have operators for position and momentum. However, we do have an operator associated with the evolution of a quantum mechanical state with respect to time. And in this short video, I want to obtain the nature of that particular operator known as the time evolution operator or propagator and discuss some of its properties because it has its uses in certain context of the theory. So first of all, if I take any kind of a quantum mechanical state, I will write this down as a psi ket at some time t naught and I want to find out the quantum mechanical state for the same system at a later point in time t, I write this down as psi ket, then is there an operator that gives us an idea about its time evolution, which I write down as u hat between t and t naught. And we can obtain an expression for this kind of a time evolution operator by just the Schrodinger equation. All right. So what does this mean? It simply means that this kind of a operation where this operator u hat maps some kind of a quantum state at t naught to the quantum state at time t if we substitute this into the time dependent Schrodinger equation, then we should get something like this minus h cross square. Uh, let's just write it as a Hamiltonian. Okay. So the Hamiltonian which acts on a state can be written as i h cross del psi upon del t. Here, of course, you are familiar with the fact that h here is nothing but the Hamiltonian, right? h is the Hamiltonian. Okay, so if I just substitute everything, I will get a very beautiful expression for this particular operator. So h, capital H, and here we have capital U. So I'm going to write uh, U t, t naught as just U here. Uh, and then I should end up getting, if I just substitute this expression, psi t naught, this is equal to i h cross del upon del t, and again, u acting on psi t naught, okay? Now, let's simplify, h operator acting on time evolution operator, acting on some state at time t naught can be written as i h cross. Now here, psi t naught is the quantum mechanical state at a time period or a time coordinate t naught. So it's essentially not really a function of time because the time t has been substituted with some t naught value. So I can take this out of the time derivative. So therefore, I'll just be left with du upon dt while psi t naught is out of the time derivative. Now, this gives us a very simple way of figuring out uh, the expression for u. So, du upon u, du upon u is equal to, here I can write 1 upon iota h cross Hamiltonian dt. Here, of course, I am looking at the coefficient of psi t naught on the left hand side and the same for the psi t naught on the right hand side and if I integrate this whole expression from let's suppose t naught to t then this gives us log of u okay between t and t naught is equal to minus iota upon h cross. Now here it depends whether Hamiltonian is a function of time or not. If the Hamiltonian is not a function of time, then you just keep the integration in this particular manner in time dependent Hamiltonian related problems. The final expression that you will get, uh, you just take this expression as it is. 
but we are going to consider conservative systems where the total amount of energy is a constant. In that case, the Hamiltonian operator can be taken out of the integral. So the capital H will come somewhere here and what is remaining is integration of time with respect to uh, between t and t naught. So this is just t minus t naught. That's it. There you have it. The expression for the time operator or the time evolution operator capital U from t naught to t is simply equal to e to the power minus iota Hamiltonian operator upon h cross times t minus t naught. That's it. This is the very simple and yet quite important operator expression for the evolution of a quantum mechanical state in the context of quantum mechanics. So if I write this finally in this expression, the quantum mechanical state at any point in time can be written as e to the power minus iota Hamiltonian upon h cross t minus t naught acting on the state at time t naught. Okay, so you can rewrite this expression in n number of ways if you want. So for example, if t naught is equal to 0, then this can be clearly written as psi t is simply equal to e to the power minus iota capital H upon h cross t acting on psi 0. All right, now here psi ket is the quantum mechanical state. In certain kinds of scenarios, we are only interested in the energy eigenfunction solutions, right? In certain kinds of scenarios, we are only interested in the energy eigenfunction solutions. So for example, if we look at the infinite potential well problem, in that kind of a scenario, this expression simplifies to none other than, if I write the energy eigenfunction uh, solution as phi t, this is nothing but e to the power minus iota, the observable associated with the Hamiltonian is nothing but the energy. So this is the energy level associated with that particular eigenfunction upon h cross t phi 0. So especially in problems like in finite potential well and similar problems where we are more interested in the energy eigenfunction solution of the time independent Schrodinger equation, then the evolution of the energy eigenfunction can be written in this particular manner where you just substitute the Hamiltonian operator with the energy eigenvalue. Anyways, I want to discuss a few crucial properties associated with the time evolution operator. One crucial property which is associated with the time evolution operator is that this is a unitary operator. What is the meaning of unitary operator? You must have heard of unitary matrices or unitary operations. So it simply means that if I take this particular operator and I take its dagger or Hermitian adjoint and I take the operator itself, then what do I get? Okay, so this is the operator I have or this is the operator I have then you know the moment I take a Hermitian adjoint, I should get a minus sign in front of the imaginary term. So this becomes plus iota capital H upon small h t minus t naught and e to the power minus iota capital H upon h cross t minus t naught. Then clearly this whole thing becomes equal to one or you should say the identity operator. Okay the identity operator. Now this has its own consequence but essentially what this means is that the time evolution operator satisfies the property that if you take the Hermitian adjoint and multiply with the or operate on to the original operator itself you get i and the same thing you can do with u u dagger or the Hermitian adjoint is simply equal to u inverse. So this is the crucial property of unitary operators which the time evolution operator is. The moment you have this property, another thing becomes very clear 
is the property associated with conservation of probability. All right. So we know that uh, whenever we have a solution of the quantum mechanical equation, which is a Schrodinger equation, it is very important that we normalize it because it must satisfy the Born's statistical interpretation. Now, the question is, as the quantum mechanical state evolves with time, then does the normalization survive? Does the probability conserve itself with time as the system is evolving? So let's check that. For example, if I take the probability of a given quantum mechanical state, which is given by the inner product of psi t with itself, then here I can introduce psi 0 being acted on by u, right? Because this is the ket, the ket and the bra version. So here I have to write, of course, the Hermitian adjoint, all right? And for the right hand side, the ket version, I can write u acting on psi naught, or I should say psi at time t naught, okay? Psi at time t naught and psi at time t naught. So this here u dagger u is nothing but the identity operator so essentially you end up getting psi t naught in a product with psi t naught so you see that the probability at a given point in time remains the same after uh, whether the time has elapsed or not so at time t naught and at time t the probability is essentially conserved so this is the conservation of the probability in quantum mechanics which is satisfied by the unitary operator so in a way as a system is evolving the probability so to speak does not leak away it is conserved and of course because we also define the length or the norm of a state by this sort of an expression by taking a square root of the inner product of a state with itself the length of a state or a quantum mechanical state is also conserved the next property I sh should mention here is that if you perform the unitary operator, this operator one after the other. So for example, if you operate u from t0 to t1, let's suppose. So this gives us the evolution of the state from t0 to t1. And then on top of it, you operate from t1 to t2, right? So this gives us the operator in which the state evolves from t1 to t2 essentially this simply represents u t2 comma t0 all right that means the overall operator just sort of gives us a state from t0 to t2 now one thing is very important is that since we are taking the time here we are going from t0 to t1 or t0 to t right we are going from t0 to t what if I want to go in the reverse direction, right? What if I want to go from t to t0? So essentially, I want to go backwards in time. Now, is that possible here? And we will see that it's quite possible. In fact, it tells us something much more fundamental about the nature of the subject. So, point number five, time reversal in closed systems. So, if you have a closed system, or an isolated quantum mechanical system which is not interacting with its environment then if I take a state like this if I just write this expression psi t is simply equal to u t t naught psi t naught right and uh, if I take this operator to the left hand side here then I should get what I should get its inverse right so if I write psi t naught this is simply equal to u inverse t t naught acting on psi t here so this simply means that this operator acting on this particular state will give us back the original state and because u inverse is simply equal to u dagger i finally end up getting psi t naught is equal to u dagger t t naught psi t now what does this expression tell us as opposed to this expression so this expression is giving us an evolution of the state from t naught to t and this expression is giving us an evolution of the state backwards from t to t naught 
So essentially the quantum mechanical theory doesn't have a preference of a forward or a backward motion in time. The theory itself is the same whether you move forward in time or backward in time. So the time evolution operator can give you a forward evolution of a quantum mechanical state as well as a backward evolution of a quantum mechanical state and there seems to be no preference as to the direction of time in this particular context. So that is all for today. The time evolution operator is important in the context of quantum mechanical theory because it tells us how a quantum mechanical state evolves from time t0 to a future time t consistently in a manner such that probabilities are conserved. There is time translational symmetry and energy is the generator of time translations. Now this kind of a topic may not be useful everywhere but students who are trying to study quantum mechanics in a rigorous fashion will find that this kind of an operator has its uses from time to time and we might rely on them in the future. I hope you have understood what the operator is, what the form is, what the properties are and in the future if I use this particular operator you should be comfortable with this. That's all for today. I am Divya Jyoti Das. This is for the love of physics. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.